Well, let's uh, talk more about Egypt. Abdullah al Aryan is an assistant professor of history at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service in Qatar. Um, you just heard uh, one of the protesters in the anti-coup alliance. Um, today, what do they hope to achieve? Do you read into that? Well, I think what we're seeing is a continuation uh, of the fact that, that there is a significant contingent within Egyptian society that's refusing to accept the results of the July 3rd uh, coup that overthrew uh, President Mohamed Morsi and has now installed a new transition in place that's in many ways, is, is from the signs that we've seen, is trying to uh, implement a return back to the old regime. We've seen, of course, uh, the repression, the campaign of violence against the Muslim Brotherhood supporters in the streets, the campaign of arrest, the seizure of assets, uh, and of course many of the court cases that are now determined to ban all of the group's activities and in, in essence dissolve the Muslim Brotherhood as, a, as an organization in Egypt. Uh, this of course is being seen as a sign of things to come in terms of the way that any independent civil society movement and organization uh, will certainly be repressed in the wake of the military assuming power in Egypt. This is called an anti-coup alliance. Apart from the Muslim Brotherhood, who else is in the alliance? Well, I think we've seen that there has been a, a growth in numbers in terms of the supporters from people who are not necessarily members or supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood. I think the fact remains, given that the Muslim Brotherhood leadership is certainly all has been, for the most part, imprisoned or is on the run, uh, that these protests are being coordinated at much lower levels within Egyptian society. We're seeing it among the student movement, the youth movement, as we've just heard. This week, Egyptian schools uh, resumed uh, their courses, and as a, as a result, we've seen uh, a wider uh, array of protesters coming out from the student movement within both the primary and secondary and even within the university systems in Egypt uh, of, of a number of students, many of whom have now resisted the calls to, to essentially endorse uh, the coup as uh, we've seen in, in, in things like, for instance, they refuse to sing songs in support of General Sisi. And how representative do you think these uh, protesters are of a wider Egyptian society? Well, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, we know, What's your of course, estimate, that, having watched it closely? Uh, there, there haven't been uh, good representations of numbers, but we know that that exists on both sides, because clearly the number of protesters who supposedly supported the overthrow of Morsi was widely exaggerated. Uh, now I think we're seeing uh, much bigger numbers that are slowly growing in terms of the number of these protests. They're actually quite scattered across Egypt, and I think this has been a strategic decision on the part of the protesters of the anti-coup alliance to not concentrate all the protest in, in one or two significant uh, locations and instead scatter them throughout the different cities and different uh, segments of, uh, of, of these urban centers. Um, I think that it's growing especially among people who may have supported the overthrow of, of Morsi originally, but are now certainly uh, coming to question that decision on the basis of the decisions we're seeing in this transition that are being far less representative, far less inclusive, uh, and certainly taking on the, um, the tactics of the old regime in terms of the violent repression. And I think this is certainly be serving as a wake-up call to larger segments of Egyptian society. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us.